Hi, we're in Mount Oliver, talking to Matt Steidel, um, and I'm also a Matt, but um, one thing that I'm not is from Mount Oliver, which this Matt is. It's true. I've never seen true. you around here. No, it's not. Oh. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that is true. Um, but you're from here, and you, you moved away, mm -hmm. and you now live in... I live in Troy Hill now. Troy Hill. And, um, and you actually went to this elementary school. Strangely enough, yeah. Strangely enough, which is... Called Philip Murray. Philip Murray. Okay. School. After a labor leader, I think he was the head of the uh, uh, what is it? The uh, CI AFL CIO. AFL C. What would uh, what? Oh, that's oh, that's a labor. It's mm -hmm. like a union. Okay. And so, so you you went there and tell me about that. I guess. Um, well, it was like you know directly down the street from my house, but because like many Pittsburgh neighborhoods and especially neighborhoods up in the hills. Uh, it's a, a, an absurd, like, Dr. Seuss, you know, level of, like, topography. Yeah. Um, I had to, like, go through people's yards and uh, down, like, sets of steps with names on them and stuff like you that. You had to, or you just... Well, I, I don't, I guess I... through there. Essentially. Yeah, okay, um, cool. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it was only, like, literally three blocks from my house, so I really had, like, a traditional sort of neighborhood school environment as, as a child. Yeah. And it was great. I, I love my teachers there. I uh, have very, very fond memories of going to this elementary school. Okay. Well, but but then you moved. Uh, did you move for work or did you move? Um, I've sort of like bounced around all over the place. I lived. Uh, I, I went to school in upstate New York, post uh, high school. So I, I thought I was going to end up in New York, and then the pull of Pittsburgh was too strong. It like pulls it you back. It's it really like the does. island from Lost. Yeah. I feel like yeah. they're just like we have to go back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I, living near and around New York taught me how much I dislike New York, actually, ultimately. Um, mm. So I came back here for four years and lived in, I guess, Lawrenceville for the, the bulk of that time. Okay. Um, and then I went to law school in Nashville, Tennessee, uh -huh. which I also disliked quite a bit, uh -huh. and <laughs> came back and uh, bought, actually, my great, I guess, my great aunt's house in Troy Hill. Um, and now, how far away is that from... Here, from Mount Oliver. Uh, I, you know, you would have thought with how late I was today that it was, uh, you know, an hour and a half away. It took forever, but um, usually it's about 20 minutes. It's it's incredibly similar demogra demographically, actually, to here. Well, what are the, what are that? I guess like what are why are the demographics here? Um, I, Mount Oliver. It's crazy actually to think when I was growing up, Mount Oliver was like. Uh, it, it was almost like a German village or something. Like, uh -huh. you know, my last name is Steidel, obviously. Uh -huh. And I, just the other day, I thought about how crazy this was. On my block, there were, in, in the immediate environments, you had like sh Schimmel's box, Kircher's. It was like literally nothing but, I, you know, all of my childhood friends had these like crazy German names. Yeah. Like you, you go to the, uh, the cemeteries, they're all like these even more insane German names. Yeah. Um, and I just thought that that was a completely normal environment when I was growing up. And yeah. then I, uh, I got older and I was like, oh, there are non-Catholic people in the world. Yeah. There are non-German people outside of this neighborhood. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I, I guess, you know, the demographics have shifted pretty substantially over the course of the last few years. Um, I think, you know, to some extent because people, the sort of housing stock around here is not something that young people necessarily are interested in anymore. It's sort of like this... Uh, like early suburban housing, basically d detached stuff. They're really nice houses. If somebody wants to buy my parents' house, that would be great. <laughs> um, so your parents' house is still here. Yeah, my parents still live, you know, within walking distance of where we are right now. Oh wow! Okay. Mm -hmm. And your parents are, are looking, to, or do you have it, or? No, they're they're uh, they're 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 sticking around. They're not. Uh, okay. They're they're not the sort of people who pull up stakes necessarily. Yeah. So I feel like a lot of is, is a lot of Mount Oliver like that. Do people like people who are here? Do they stay here or? Well, that's an interesting thing. I, in my understanding, the demographics are super skewed in that way. In terms of they're either people over the age of like sixty or they're under the age of twenty five. Basically, it's mm. new people moving in or people who've just been here forever. Yeah. Um, but I mean, when I was growing up, a lot a lot of people moved out of Mount Oliver over the course of that time. Like, I mean. A lot of kids I went to this elementary school with started by going to Bishop. They moved to Bishop Leonard, which was is a no longer existing Catholic school, um, and then moved to a lot of them moved to Baldwin or Brentwood and places like that um, because they started thinking that it was it was unsafe. Yeah. Um, I don't know. My parents were never alarmists in that in that sense, so we sort of 
stuck it out. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, but now, and now the, the school is closed down, I guess, since... Yeah, I guess within the last year or two, I actually just heard about that. It's really just kind of a bummer. Okay, do you know, do you know like, wh- why that it was, or just... Probably a lot of it is that the school was half, essentially half kids from Mount Oliver and like Knoxville and I think a few kids from Carrick and then like half kids from St. Clair Village, which is like right across the street over there, um, which was a massive housing project at one time that no longer really exists at all. They completely decimated the neighborhood. So I guess there's just not the same number of kids. Plus there's sort of a citywide phenomenon, unfortunately, of people not using the public schools as much as they used to anyway. Right. Yeah, that happens a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, but do you see it ever coming back? I mean, or do you see, like, uh, this neighborhood seems like it's on the verge of, like, becoming something different, or it's everything's always changing, but right. how do you think this neighborhood's, like, changing, I guess? Well, as I was driving around, you know, obviously the city neighborhood of Mount Oliver is distinct from the borough of Mount Oliver, but that's only a distinction that people probably from outside of the neighborhood would even recognize. Right. Um, there, this area is, like I said, unfortunately sort of more, it's almost entirely residential. There is, I think there is, there used to be a corner store called Tafts uh-huh. uh, and a bar called Lotterbox. Um, not think, owned by William Howard Taft. I don't, not the I don't no. believe so. I'm not, okay. I, I can't say that for certain. Right. Um, but otherwise it's entirely residential. There's no, you know, uh, there's relatively easy access to Brownsville Avenue. Uh-huh. But for, especially for older people, you know, it's like a mile away from here. Yeah. Um, and I mean, St. Clair Village, what remains of St. Clair Village is incredibly inaccessible to virtually anywhere, unfortunately. Uh, there's only one bus line that runs here anymore, the 44, and it has this incredibly circuitous route um, <laughs> that goes through like Beltsuver and Knoxville before it gets here. It, it takes forever. Yeah. Um, but uh, as I was driving here today, I was driving down Brownsville Road, which is technically in the borough of Mount Oliver. Um, and thinking about how like sort of the, the the bones of that area are really still really strong, there there are boarded up storefronts and that sort of thing, but they haven't been boarded up for very long. There's a lot of I, I feel like that area could really be revitalized, and it's such a it's it's such an attractive area architecturally if you really just look at the facades of the buildings and that sort of thing. I don't know why it couldn't be places like that or Warrington Avenue in Allentown couldn't be revitalized especially given you know, the recent sort of increase in population in Pittsburgh more generally, people are gonna to need to start filling out these neighborhoods. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Um, thank you, this is the, this has been a good interview. Um, <laughs> I guess, they, I mean, we, we talked about the change in Mount Oliver. We talked about uh, the bus, I mean, the bus is, uh, that's never gonna change. But <laughs> yeah, um, and, uh, and yeah, it's, it's been really interesting to hear your stories about uh, growing up here, uh, going to this elementary school, which is now closed, but maybe one day will be reopened again, I guess. I hope so. Yeah. Well, thank you. All right, cool. Thank you. All right, from one mat to the other.